I have a confession to make. Um, yesterday was not my birthday. <laughs> I know it's on Facebook, and everything on Facebook is true. So, yeah, I, I really, I, the gospel of Facebook. So, it's not my birthday. I, I put down September 2nd um, because a little paranoia about identity theft. Um, but also, it's fun to have a Facebook birthday that's not my real <laughs> birthday. Because I got a, a hundred well wishes and prayers out of that. And tomorrow, I'm going to see my family. We'll have cake and cards and water balloons. So it's going to be another birthday, my family birthday. And then the end of the month, that's my real birthday. So I got three birthdays for one. Isn't that a great deal? I just want to share that with you and make that confession come clean. You're okay? We're okay with that? All right. So keep, keep checking Facebook, but don't believe it. <laughs> Well, last week, if you recall, Jesus was the, kind of the guest from hell. He told the leading Pharisees dining at his home, he says, you invited the wrong guest. You're supposed to invite not your friends and family, but your, your, the poor, the lame, the crippled, the blind. People cannot repay you. I mean, just, Jesus is just really not going to get invited back. But he's saying you've got to overcome those divides and lead the way, overcoming division in our society. And then today, the crowds are following Jesus, and he turns on them. You know, he's a rock star. Everyone's following him. He says, stop the train. If you do not hate your brothers and sisters and mother and father, wife and children, your own life, you cannot be my disciple. If you do not renounce all your possessions, you do not carry a cross, you cannot be my disciple. Anyone still coming? <laughs> the second reading was Paul's letter to Philemon. It's the shortest letter in the Bible. You can read it in maybe eight or nine minutes and say, yeah, I read part of the Bible. <laughs> and let me tell you a little bit this. Let's talk about Philemon. Uh, Philemon was a, a, a slave owner. He, he's a, 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 a free person. He owned a slave. The slave's name was Onesimus. Onesimus ran away from him, probably um, um, causing some theft along the way. And so Onesimus ran away, came across Paul somehow, and Paul converted Onesimus to Christianity. And um, Paul's in prison. Now Paul is sending Onesimus back to Philemon, back to his master, with a letter. Instead of keeping Onesimus and, and say, great, stay with me, we'll proclaim the gospel, we'll do, you're here to help me, and, and don't worry about that slave thing. No, he sends him back to Philemon, his master, but with a letter. And in this letter that Onesimus hand delivers to his master Philemon, Paul wrote, Welcome him, Onesimus, as you would welcome me. I send him as my own heart to you. Use that word, my own heart. Welcome him as a beloved brother. Not as a slave, but as a brother. Wow. Tomorrow is the canonization of Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. And tomorrow started 70 years ago. The events for tomorrow, the canonization, the events began 70 years ago, 1946, almost to the, to the day, September 10th, um, 19, 19, 1946. Mother Teresa was on a train. She was a, a sister Teresa, or she's on a train going to a retreat in Dar Darjeeling. And on this train, she heard the Lord, the Lord say to her, I want you to be poor and with the poor. I want you to be poor and with the poor. And she came to discern the Lord wanted her to serve the, the poorest of the poor, to give them dignity and be poor with them. Not a do-gooder coming in and going back home to a nice bed, but be right there with them and be poor with them. Now, Mother Teresa, four years earlier, she had made a promise, a private vow to Jesus. She said, Jesus, everything I have... I give to you. Anything you want, I will not refuse. Private vow. Sounds very pious, sounds very nice, but careful what you promise Jesus. <laughs> because he came at her four years later and said, 
said, I want you to be poor with the poor, to leave what you have and be with the poor. And so she went to communion, and she heard, kept as receiving the Lord, the body and blood of Christ, but heard that voice saying, wilt thou refuse? In other words, you made that promise, you're not going to refuse me anything, now you refuse me, now you're hesitating? Several years later, then, she eventually did leave her order, go into the streets in 1950, and start her, her great work that continues to this day. Now, be careful we promise Jesus. Because he asked for everything. Everything. And that's what Paul was saying to Philemon, this slave owner. Um, he's saying, receive Onesimus, not as a slave, not just to be nice to him, now that he's a Christian and you're a Christian, okay, but put Christ first. When you became Christian, Paul's saying, you made a commitment to Christ. You made a commitment that Christ would reign in your home, in your life, in your work, everything. And now I'm calling you on that commitment to uphold it and honor it and receive Onesimus as a brother. Now, Philemon, the slave owner, reading this letter is no doubt a lot of thoughts going through his head. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> I, that was not in the print, the fine print when I was baptized. I didn't know that. Or Really? Are you sure? I mean, okay, if he receives Philemon, as, sees Onesimus as, as his brother, not as a free person, not as a slave, what will his other slaves do? Run away. <laughs> Get baptized. Come back. And they're free. I mean, it would wreck everything. His neighbors would know instantly what's going on. Neighbors talk to neighbors and keep an eye on who's doing what. And they say, wait a second. This is not the way things work. We're the owners. They're the slaves. When you start changing that, that messes with everything. They're going to stay away from him. And his wife, don't know if she's Christian or not, but his wife... She's responsible for the household and the slaves. And now he's going to tell her, like, uh, honey, uh, welcome Onesimus as our brother. <laughs> That's going to go real well. It's going to be a, kind of a lot of nights on the couch. I mean, because she's used to a certain lifestyle, certain comforts, servants. When she says, do this, they do that. And now she has to ask, pay them, treat them as a brother. So Philemon, no doubt, is thinking in his head, like, Paul, uh, I know you baptized me. I know I became Christian. I know all that, and, and Christ is definitely number one in my life and all that. But, and, and in, I get it, the dignity of the person. I get it, what you said about there's no division, no free or slave or Greek or Jew. I get it. I know that. But let's be practical. Yeah. And this, is, this is kind of tricky. This guy's close to home. There was a guy on vacation, true story, and he uh, was, was just starting his vacation. He stopped in this little country church to catch mass on Sunday. And, and uh, with an offertory plate was coming along, just a few pews and, that were there, and he, here comes the plate, and he got out his wallet, and he's looking at the dollar bills. He kind of had his bills in order. He had like, the ones, the fives, the tens, and bigger bills. He had, he's going on vacation, so he had some cash on hand just in case. And he's looking, and he's kind of looking for the one dollar bills, and this little old lady leans over to him and says, Give it all. <laughs> and he's like, what? <laughs> I mean, this is his vacation money. She probably says this to everybody. <laughs> Every stranger comes to their church. Give it all. Really? So the next several days, he went on his vacation. He's bothered him. Just give it all. I mean, really? I mean, how much... So he's doing all this calculating in his head. Like, what's, how much should I give and how much do I keep? Give it all, really? I mean, that gospel, you can understand what Jesus is saying to his disciples. You know, before you follow me any further, count the cost. Count the cost. 
It's like building a tower and not running out of money. Everybody's going to laugh at you. Just have cement blocks and things hanging half done. They're going to laugh at you. Or if you go off, you're king, you go out to battle, and, and you're going to get slaughtered unless you recognize, you know, who's coming at you. Be ready for it. So count the cost, Jesus says. And unqualified, he says, put God first. You know, hate brother and mother, father and son, wife and children, your own life. Carry your cross, not what you choose, but what's given to you, that suffering in your life. Pick it up, carry it every day. And renounce all your possessions. By the way, give it all. Count the cost. But we calculate, like Philemon, we calculate, like that guy on vacation, like really, give it all. But the gospel, the gospel is uncompromising. And because we have a vision from the gospel, from the Lord. We have a vision that the way things are, the divisions between peoples, is not the way God meant it to be. Labor Day is Monday, and every year our bishops uh, write a statement about, about work. And Archbishop Wensky wrote this statement on behalf of the other bishops of our country. And he said that uh, we envision jobs and wages that provide dignity to individuals and for their families. They can provide for their families without working 50, 60, 70 hours a week. That they can have you know, decent health care, <laughs> access to health care. And we envision safe working conditions. They don't get hurt at work. And we, you know, we envision that they have a life apart from work. We have a vision for work. Because work is much more than just providing for your family. Work is for building up God's work, continuing God's creation. That's our vision. And the Lord's vision goes beyond that there's the division between employer and employee is gone, between free and slave, gone, between ethnic groups, gone. Not that they don't exist, but they don't matter. We're no longer comparing ourselves or trying to be better than others but we treat one another as brothers and sisters in the Lord. We welcome one another as Paul begged Philemon to receive an estimate. This is our vision of what can be. And this is what we advocate for. This is what we work for. This is we lead the way. We don't know how Philemon received Onesimus. All we got is Paul's letter. We don't have the response. We don't know what Philemon did. But we do know what Paul did. We know that Paul spread that message. There's no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, no divisions in Christ. And Paul went on to give his life for that gospel. And we do know what Mother Teresa did, that she did not refuse the Lord when he said, I want you to be poor with the poor. And she left everything and started that great work of the Missionaries of Charity that in bare bones has given dignity to countless souls and inspired countless more to serve and give. And we know what our Lord God has done, that he gave his only begotten son so that everyone who believes in him will have life, his life. Heaven and earth are one through him. We know our Lord God and gave it all. 